Welcome to Inside Tulsa Athletics. This is our last show of the year, and we've got our eight football coaches that are currently on staff to talk about spring practice. We also have the state championship back-to-back -back girls soccer coach, 5A state champions, Cassie Embry. And then we'll wrap up the show with a little bit of a reflection on what has happened this year in Tulsa Athletics. Stay tuned. I think you're going to enjoy this show. Welcome back. We have a special guest here to start out our show this week, uh, the head football coach of the McLean Titans, Willie Ponder. Willie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, Coach, uh, you know, we, we went through last year in uh, inaugural season and everything. Uh, uh, give us your thoughts about how things went. Last season, it was, um, I would say it's a learning experience for me. It was obviously my first head coaching job. Um, a lot of people was questioning me taking that McLean job due to where I had came from, coaching college ball and stuff like that. But um, I would call it a success. Um, Record-wise, it wasn't that, but success due to a few guys learned something. I got a chance to touch a few kids' lives, um, and I think that was the main thing about it, um, was helping some of those seniors get out of there and, and get f teaching them a few um, core values. Well, I can tell you that about, you know, uh in 1976, mm -hmm. I took the union AD job. Mm -hmm. And when I took it, everybody said, that, you're committing career suicide. Yeah. That will be the yeah. worst thing you've ever done. <laughs> right. And 30 state championships later, yeah. I left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't so bad. Right. But right. you got to be patient yes, as sir. you go through mm -hmm. that building. Mm -hmm. So you so you go through the season, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, how's off season gone? Off season's going great. Um, four by two team boys went to track uh, state, um, had a young guy on that. Um, it's going good now. Grades are up. That's one thing Excellent. that I've seen. Um, I'm, I know going into last year getting a job, I had a good, basically my whole secondary were senior guys and six-weekers. Um, mm -hmm. Looking at the end of it now, I don't think I'll have any six-weekers. Good. Um, I think that's the, uh, the positive thing and the thing that's, okay, we're going in the right direction because um, I've been on them hard about grades and their education. So um, I think it'll be great. Um, with not having six rickers. Um, mm, that's, that's a step forward. Um, got approached this morning by about five kids excited. Coach, we're going to get the hit today? No, <laughs> <laughs> no. We're going to check out helmets. Right, we're right, going to take right, some right. process, and it's a, uh, you know, but um, <clears throat> they're excited, and um, I think that's a good thing um, moving forward. Well, that's always encouraging mm -hmm. when they're excited to go to spring practice. Yeah. Because yeah. I can remember spring practice, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you can. Yes. Uh, oh, you know, God. it's one of those things that you, you know, oh, my God, we've got spring practice. But, right. But mm -hmm. uh, that's good that they're excited about yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you've got 21 days. What do you want to accomplish in those 21 days of practices that you technique, have? Technique, um, <clears throat> getting the guys to know the importance of lining up correctly. Um, I think I've, I'm just even getting it, taking the job, I've always felt that there's athletes over there. Those kids can play the game, um, but it's the other parts. Um, teaching technique, um, how to line up, the importance of um, doing the right thing and being at the right place at the right time. Um, and just teaching them the scheme. Um, going into my second year, um, I used the system that I was familiar with as far as when I was at um, Colorado Mesa. Um, people say, dumb it down. I said, well, this is high school football. Mm -hmm. um, it's not too much that I can dumb down because I've done that enough. Right. I said, the thing is, is getting kids to buy in and want to learn. You know, just and I go back to the simple stuff like lining up. I watch so much film. Our AD coach Johnson, he'll come in my office and he's like, "I'm watching film." He's like, "You always watching that film?" I, said, <laughs> I gotta see what they can do, and right. what the problem was, and and all those games. It's it's not that they can't play. I think it's just more of just knowing and understanding what what they need to you do. You know, the biggest thing I, as a head football coach, I always was concerned about as those kids came into our program mm -hmm. was terminology. Yes. 
when we're talking the same language, we mm -hmm. know if we're if, you know if we're going to go cloud or sky on the corner. Right. Everybody in the secondary knows what cloud or sky cool. means. Right. You know? I mean, mm -hmm. those, mm -hmm. or a three technique or yes. a five technique. Yes. Th those things uh, mm -hmm. cut down the amount of time you have to reteach yes. when mm -hmm. they come in your program. Right. So I I mean I totally agree because that was a simple thing. Like I said. Those kids didn't even know what a three tech is. Mm -hmm. I'm telling them we're gonna go Florida, 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 which is a cover three. Right. They know Florida, but what is really cover three? Yeah, what who, is cover do three? you know who's the flat player? Yeah. Do you know where you're supposed to be? And I think uh, once we hone that in, the terminology of it, um, things will be a lot better. Well, they sure will. Yeah. Uh, we've got about 20 seconds. Yeah. Uh, who's the beat in your in your district? Well, obviously Wagner. You Wagner, know, Wagner yeah, is a, you know, Bristow's not no joke neither. Right, um, right. Right now I'm pushing to, uh, we got to be able to get a win against Ulagao or Katusa. Okay. Well, thank you for yes, being sir. here today. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, we'll have Parker Childress, the new head football coach at Rogers. Stuff. When you don't want it, what do you do with it? Go to TulsaRefuse.org. There, you'll learn what to do with stuff you don't know what to do with. Just give us a click. TulsaRefuse.org. It's what you do when you don't know what to do with stuff. My dad's always saying a little extra effort now will really pay off later. Here's how you can put in just a little extra effort and help out our schools in a big way. Just switch your checking account to TTCU. It's easy. And every time you use your school pride card, TTCU donates to our schools. So far, over a million dollars. They're the only ones doing that. So make the switch to TTCU and be the person who's making a difference for our schools. Are you suffering from stuff? Stuff you don't know how to get rid of. Go to TulsaRefuse.org. Learn how to get rid of stuff easily and properly. TulsaRefuse.org. Just give us a click. It's that simple. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics, and we have a new head football coach at Will Rogers High School, Parker Childress. Parker, uh, you've been uh, at Thoreau, we've been in the program, yeah. have coached a little bit. Tell us a little bit about your background. Um, I've been at Thoreau for five years. Uh, got to work as an assistant for three years, and was an interim head coach, kind of a halfway head coach for a year, and then last year was my first full year as a head coach there. Had a great experience over there. I got to coach with some great people and learn <clears throat> the ins and outs um, from some from some great coaches, some great men, and uh, uh, it's been really fun. And I'm excited for the next step going up to the high school level. I think you know, it's gonna be really going fun. to going to Will Rogers, uh, who uh, through the past few years uh, has not had a tremendous legacy, but prior to that, Correct. did have a, a legacy in football. And uh, one of the exciting things kind of taking back from the the field of dreams build it and they will come yeah we're building yeah. a new stadium at rogers yeah. how, how do you think that'll help your program I, i'm excited to, to get to see that thing i've seen the, the the sketches of it and it's beautiful um i think kids are drawn to new things a lot of times you know the day and age we live in that's why oregon got really good at football they had those nice uniforms for a while mm -hmm. um i see that as a great opportunity as a as a place to kind of as as a program at the reboot button which is kind of cool for those kids to you know, exercise the demons possibly of their of their past couple seasons and, and move forward with a new stadium and a new uh, identity as a team. And I'm excited about getting to be the person in charge of and that. And a new coaching staff. Exactly, right? Yeah, right, exactly. right. Uh, the, you had some success uh, at Thoreau yeah. with some really quality student athletes. Yes. Will any of those student athletes be coming to Rogers? Um, I, the, the eighth grade class this year that's going to be ninth graders, most of them had already made up their mind. Um, so I think there's a couple going over there. But my seventh graders that are going to be eighth graders were all today talking to me about, I'm excited to go to Rogers now. <laughs> a bunch of them walking up and down the hallways. So yeah. I'm excited about kind of getting to establish um, a relationship uh, with that school and carry it forward with me sure. in high school. I think it's a, a, a unique opportunity for me to get to kind of uh, coach those kids again at the next level. Well, it's, uh, you know, it's, you, you have a good administration yeah. there, I think, uh, uh, Nikki Dennis, the principal, and then of course Crystal Marquardt, the athletic director, really care about uh, having success yeah. for those kids. Yeah. And uh, with that and the uh, the addition to the facilities, I think that's really going to be uh, a positive for Rogers. Uh, spring practice starts this week. Yep. Uh, how do you feel about that? Um, I'm busy. I'm very busy. I, I just finished up. Um, 
with soccer with at the road middle school soccer yeah i got one more game on wednesday actually so i'll be doing double duty yeah at soccer and, and football um i'm excited to get to teach the the higher level football stuff you know I, I, when you teach seventh and eighth grade you kind of get into it with some of your your eighth graders your older kids getting into different schemes and and route concepts and explaining the game to them but they don't really get it and so i'm kind of excited about getting to teach football as, a, as an art, as a craft, and, and get into the ins and outs of, of how to play football well. Do you know uh, anything about the personnel that you'll be coaching? Not yet. I'm meeting the team today. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah, I get to great. officially meet everyone today and, and kind of um, put some names, or put some faces to names, for sure. Well, today is Monday, and we're taping today, and, and yeah. uh, so that'll be... Uh, we're not letting anything out of the box because this won't be on until five o'clock on okay, Wednesday. Cool. So, uh, but it'll no be secrets. A, it'll be a, be exciting, I think, uh, uh, to start a new job. I always like starting new jobs. You have new challenges and yep. things like that. Uh, what What do you want to accomplish in the first season? I really think it, it's important as a new coach to establish a, a new identity or new culture. And and my big thing is is success on the field, but also in the classroom and the community. I want to really ingrain into my players um, a passion for school and giving back and helping people out too. Because uh, a lot of the kids that I'm going to deal with over at Rogers um, come from diverse backgrounds and, and interesting situations, different situations. And I think it's good for those kids to, to give back and, and get to help other people that need help. Um, I, that's one of my big goals is, is making good men, creating good good people, good citizens. and. You know, wins will come uh, come later. Yeah, I'm not super worried about that. Obviously, I want to win. Duh. Sure. Everyone wants to win, but I really I think it's important to teach these people, teach these young men how to be good. good well, that's the important thing I think we do yeah. is uh, the life after football, because there is a life Correct. after football. Well, Brian, thank you for being here. Good luck at Will Rogers High School. And uh, when we come back, we'll have Tony Daniels, who's the athletic director and head football coach at Edison. Stuff. When you don't want it, what do you do with it? Go to TulsaRefuse.org. There, you'll learn what to do with stuff you don't know what to do with. Just give us a click. TulsaRefuse.org. It's what you do when you don't know what to do with stuff. Hi, I'm Tony Dillingham, Athletic Director for Jinx Public Schools. The first annual Oklahoma Athletic Directors Conference is the must-attend event for every Oklahoma high school athletic director. Join us June 10th and 11th at the Cox Convention Center in downtown Oklahoma City. The two-day conference will feature breakout sessions covering law, staff development, fundraising, social media, and many other areas that are sure to improve your effectiveness as a key administrator in your district. The OADC will also be a great place to network with key people in our industry regarding the latest issues and trends in Oklahoma athletics. Conference registration is now open, so visit Oklahoma OIAAA.com for conference registration, hotel information, and details about the conference. Don't wait. Make your reservation today. Are you suffering from stuff? Stuff you don't know how to get rid of. Go to TulsaRefuse.org. Learn how to get rid of stuff easily and properly. TulsaRefuse.org. Just give us a click. It's that simple. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. Now we have the head football coach and director of athletics at Edison, Tony Daniels. Tony, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, last year was a, was a pretty good year for you. Uh, you have some players. And, uh, let's talk about how last year feeds into off season, then to powerlifting, and then to spring practice. Sure. So we graduated 13 kids last year. And um, out of those 13, we have eight returning um, on the offensive side of the ball, and we have seven coming back on the defensive side of the ball. So we have a lot of those kids that are 2020 uh, kids that will be uh, graduating here soon um, this next year that have played since their freshman, sophomore year since they've started with us. So they've been in the program. They know what it takes. Um, I'm, I'm a big culture guy uh, along with the X's and O's, but being cult, uh, having culture and, uh, and building that and, um, and building those young men into uh, productive citizens in the society and mm -hmm. doing a great job as soon as they leave and that's that's where I get a lot of satisfaction but <clears throat> you know we have a lot of those kids we have 28 um, 2020 kids that will be graduating so this is our Gee, biggest class yeah, big that we've had so the transition has just been from from after the after the season 
um, staying hungry because we didn't finish the way we wanted to with Claire Moore coming over. This is the first time we've hosted a playoff game in 23 years. Uh, finished second in district, uh, lost to Bishop Kelly last year uh, by 11 points. So, I mean, we're right there. Uh, and we uh, hit it really hard in the powerlifting program this past season. Did really well with that. And then now it's transitioned to uh, spring ball that we get started today. So we're, we're definitely excited. Well, yeah, as you look at spring ball, what, what are the things you want to accomplish uh, during these 21 days that you have? So what we try to to establish is we want to make sure the teaching, the coaching is going on out there on the field. We're not there to win spring ball. We're not there to win team camps uh, and where we're going to go. We just want to make sure that we create depth. We become better at each position and that the, the kids get a little bit more knowledgeable. Well, you have a little bit of advantage uh, at Edison because uh, your feeder system is right in the same building almost. Right, so uh, I'm able to work with those kids every day and uh, it, it's really been very great. It, it's been really good for me to be able to be out there and be with some of the staff and be able to work with some of those kids and, and implement myself and our program and what we do and the culture and you know what we talk about with our high school um, as an example is discipline. Um, we talk about, you know, we have seven core values. That's just one of our core values we mm -hmm. use, and we're able to use that and instill that into the middle school program, too. Well, that's good. Well, let's talk a little bit about your district. Uh, uh, who's the team to beat in your district, aside from you? I think uh, Bishop Kelly. Bishop Kelly's going to be pretty good. Um, they'll return quite a few. I think they're returning 10 on defense. They only mm -hmm. um, Jeez, lose man. one in Barkley. Um, so I think every year... Um, Year in and year out, it's going to be Bishop Kelly that's going to be up there, up at the top. Uh, but I think uh, the new hiring of Force Maisie, the new head football coach out there at McAllister, I think he's he's done some great things at some places he's been, and I think he's going to implement and do a really good job out there um, on that on that side of things. But uh, Kawita uh, had finished, you know, up there in Ada. I, I really like Chris. He's a head coach out there at Ada. He's done a really good job. Him and I have hit it off pretty good. So I think some of the, the ones that we've kind of talked about, I mean, Bishop Kelly kind of up there at the top, I feel like that with us returning a lot of kids that we have, we're going to have a really good shot at it too. No, that's good. The uh, uh, league is a little bit in flux, though. Didn't you uh, indicate that uh, uh, the Coeta coach has resigned? That's that's what we had heard. Had <laughs> resigned in first day of spring ball, so it's a yeah. little bit uh, – don't know what will happen there. I think I'm pretty sure they'll still get started. You know, if I was in that position, it'd be something I'd still want to get started and get those sure. kids after it because that's what they've been working for. I think, uh, and, and you're right about the McAllister. You know, I was the head football coach at McAllister at one time in my career, and uh, it is a football town. People yes. really look forward to that. Uh, we've got about 40 seconds. Let's talk about uh, your, your top college prospect that you have. Sure. So, uh, Savion Morrison. Um, is at 21 Division One offers right now. Has been doing a really good job. Just finished up track, and uh, they ran their first, their their fastest time in the uh, the four by one. Uh, they didn't place, but uh, they ran in 43 seconds. So they did mm -hmm. really good there, and uh, just ready tran to transition. We talked on Friday, and uh, he was just excited about getting ready to get started again well, on, on Monday. So. You always want to be excited to go to spring practice. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, you do. <laughs> that's a big deal. You well, do. thanks for being on the show today, and uh, when we come back. We're going to have Kip Shaw, the head football coach at Central High School. Stuff. When you don't want it, what do you do with it? Go to TulsaRefuse.org. There, you'll learn what to do with stuff you don't know what to do with. Just give us a click. TulsaRefuse.org. It's what you do when you don't know what to do with stuff. We, we just, just finished dinner, dinner and, and it was time, time for homework. homework. He I hates hate homework. homework. I know he's bright. Why is it so hard for me? He's I'm just trying as try hard a little as harder. I can. One in five children struggle with learning and attention issues. Go from misunderstanding to understood.org. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. Now we have the head football coach of the Central Braves, Kip Shaw. Kip, welcome to Inside Tulsa. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing great. It's springtime. It's uh, hope spring is eternal, you know, <laughs> for the next year. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the 19, I mean, the 18 season as you get ready to go into the 19 season. We, we took our lumps. We were pretty inexperienced. Uh, lost our quarterback, fifth game of the season, played the rest of the year without him. Had some young men that stepped up, which is, is exciting because you see what you're going to have the following year. Um, like anybody, you always wish you had more linemen. Um, even this year, you wish you had a little more linemen, but We've had a good, good, great offseason that I think is going to bring us forward and 
kids are starting to understand the academic part of it. So you're hoping those issues was kind of went by the wayside. So I'm excited about next year. That Looking sounds good. Um, having a quarterback back is huge, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. You know, anytime you have to move guys around and put guys in at quarterback that have never played before, and you get a kid back like K2 Owens that can sling the football around and make plays for you with his legs, um, it, it, it's exciting to see he's put some muscle on this offseason, so I'm, I'm excited to see what he can do. Great. Well, let's talk. you said you uh, everybody needs linemen. There's no question about that. <laughs> Uh, they're not a dime a dozen out there. You got to find them. They're, they're diamonds in the rough, basically. But uh, uh, how about your offensive defense in line? I think we're going to be pretty good. We've got a couple uh, long kids on the defensive end side: um, uh, Demarco James, Demarion Leathers, who. They're going to be speed type guys who can come off of there. We've got to beef up a little bit in the middle, and that's where you know you're hoping your offseason program has came. Um, we're really good at linebacker. I've got Cody Lang and and Jewel Hamilton, who were stellar players last year. Jewel played a lot nicked up last year, so he really didn't get to excel like he normally would. But there's a kid that's put on about 10, 15 pounds this offseason who can easily be a Division One football player. He's got great grades, so I'm excited to see what he can do. Mm -hmm. Offensive line, we, we still got a little bit ways to go. Um, Hunter Mounts, who started at center for us, is back. We've got a couple young kids that, that are going to fill in. My, my excitement's going to come in the fall when I get those eighth graders. I've got a couple really good-sized eighth graders that I'm hoping can come in and make a difference for us. That'd be great. Uh, so let's talk about uh, a little bit about what uh, – uh, your your district is like? My district's tough. Uh, you know, we're in there with Hilldale, Poto, Broken Bow, who are top of the line programs, mm -hmm. and year in and year out, they go deep into the playoffs, and they're the example of where you want your program to get. Um, my kids now understand that in order to achieve that level, you've got to put the time in in the weight room. You've got to get to practice. You've got to do the little things that are going to help you excel, and you know, hopefully this year we're a lot more competitive than we were last year in the district, and that, you know, I'm hoping the offseason translates into that. You know, Coach, it's always one of those things when uh, uh, you're in a multi-school district and you play those one-school towns, you know, where it's the most important thing in that community uh, every Friday night. And, you know, we have a lot of different opportunities around there. And I think sometimes it's hard for our student-athletes to understand that. And then the other factor in 4A is, there's, is the travel is so much. Exactly right. You know, those distractions are big. Like you say, our kids, there's a lot of other opportunities, but we're hoping I'm getting that we're getting to the point to where our kids understand that. And you're right, the travel's tough. Last year we went to Broken Bow, that's a four hour bus ride. This year we go to Poto, that's three and a half hour. But, you know, so the district kind of spreads you out, and our kids, they have to get used to traveling like that. And, going and getting off the bus, ready to play a game after that long trip. And those are things that they're starting to understand. You know, it's, it is difficult. Uh, you know, I can remember years when I was at Union, and uh, I think one year the longest bus trip we had was the La Fortune Stadium. <laughs> you, you know, and, and, and what happens now because of the uh, eight-team districts. Yes. Back in the day when we had four-team districts, we got to pick seven people to play. You know, and that from us was a financial standpoint. We want to pick the right seven to make some money. Uh, when we went to eight, it became a lot more difficult. Well, we're excited uh, about Central, and, and we know that uh, you'll do a great job over there this year and uh, hopefully get some of those kids uh, up to the next level. Uh, that'll be fantastic. I agree, and that's what we're excited about. And that's, that's the goal, always get them to further their education after high school. I think, you, I think you've placed the right emphasis uh, on academics as well. I think that's really, really, I know when we interviewed you, I, I was very impressed with all that. So welcome back. And uh, we'll be back in just a moment with uh, Brian Jones, who the head football coach at Hale. Stuff. When you don't want it, what do you do with it? Go to TulsaRefuse.org. There, you'll learn what to do with stuff you don't know what to do with. Just give us a click. TulsaRefuse.org. It's what you do when you don't know what to do with stuff. My dad's always saying a little extra effort now will really pay off later. Here's how you can put in just a little extra effort and help out our schools in a big way. Just switch your checking account to TTCU. It's easy, and every time you use your school pride card, TTCU donates to our schools. So far, over a million dollars. 
they're the only ones doing that. So make the switch to TTCU and be the person who's making a difference for our schools. Are you suffering from stuff? Stuff you don't know how to get rid of. Go to TulsaRefuse.org. Learn how to get rid of stuff easily and properly. TulsaRefuse.org. Just give us a click. It's that simple. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. Now we have with us the head football coach of the Nathan Hale Rangers, Brian Jones. Brian, how was off season after your fall season? Uh, off season this year for us has been great, honestly. Uh, we took a lot of time out to get on the board and actually learn football. I think that was one of the problems last year. You had a bunch of kids that said they, they played it, but I don't think they knew it quite like I thought they should. Um, even backdating in the last season, it was almost impossible to teach football and scheme and get ready for a game week to week. So um, mm -hmm. this past off season, we got in the weight room, we got on the board, we stayed on the board a little bit more than the weight room. Um, I didn't want to, but I felt like you had to sacrifice almost one or the other. Um, then we picked up the uh, weight room more, and now we're getting ready to go in the spring. So. Well, we always know that you have to have patience. Oh yeah, absolutely. When you're building the program, absolutely, and it doesn't happen in a year. You know, it's one it of those things. Uh, so, how uh, how does your feeder program work with uh, uh, Hale Junior High? Uh, our feeder program, uh, actually, I'm glad you asked that. Um, our feeder program. I mean, they feed right right over into the the uh, high school. What I've done, I want to say, in the in the past week, we we went over and we spoke to some of the um, incoming eighth graders and um, got them to commit and say they wanted to come play ball for us. Uh, this week, I believe Wednesday, we're supposed to have a um, a national signing day, so to speak, yeah. for the eighth graders. Um, again, you you want to make football fun again for these incoming guys. That way, when they come, that you know they feel like they're a part of something versus just coming in being at the bottom of the list with the freshmen. So uh, we'll come in, we'll do the signing day, give them the jersey, let them put up, let let them uh, put the jersey on, um, speak more about football in depth, what we expect of them as far as commitment, responsibility, uh, those things. Um, you know, take the pictures and, and, and get them ready to go into uh, summer pride. So. I think that's a great idea. That gets that commitment down oh, yeah, with absolutely. their signature on it. Right. And uh, I want to be a Hail Ranger. And, you know, that's one of the things that I think district-wide we need to work on is having people in the feeder pipeline that stay in the feeder pipeline and don't divert out to somewhere other else. schools, right. even within the district, yeah. uh, which they can do, you know. But uh, so who are some of the ones that you're looking at to uh, – really uh, take you to the next level? Uh, well, as far as our varsity program, um, D'Angelo Washington can help us uh, quite a bit. He's an athlete. This year, I believe we may have to use him at quarterback some. Um, Demontre Meeks is, is, is pretty good for us. Um, we have a, a couple, six, seven. We have two, six, seven sophomores, uh, one in uh, Malcolm Davis and another one in Jonathan Patterson. So uh, I believe those guys could help us. Um, we're missing a few other key positions, but I think that's what spring ball is for, for us to get out and find out uh, who've grown mentally um, and physically by way of uh, the weight room. And, and we kind of go from there. So. Everybody's problem is uh, offensive, defensive linemen. Uh, I would like to say that's not ours. I believe we have maybe 13 linemen. I believe, yeah, yeah, we got we got quite a bit of linemen, um, and again, they're they're six six four six five ranging from maybe six four six five. So it'll be a lot different year than what it was last year, guaranteed. That's fantastic. Guaranteed. Uh, talk a little bit about your district. Who who uh, is the one to beat in your district? Uh, in in state, we'll say Tulsa Edison, but obviously, um, well, I can't even say in state. In state, um, in the city, we will say Tulsa Edison and Bishop Kelly. Um, aside from that, those two are. They, they, and again, they were at the top of the district last year, then along with uh, Coweta. Um, McAllister, I don't know why, but I got a really good feeling they'll be pretty good this year. Um, Glenn Poole and Durant and Ada, I believe, would be really good this year. Um, again, for us, it's just a matter of, I would say, taking in a game at a time. Um, facing adversity and learning how to deal with adversity and going to get these guys and, and, and actually taking a advantage of uh, everything that we learned during the off season and everything that we're going to do over the summer. So, Well, it's only year two. Uh, yeah. And you've yeah. got, you got to think about those kind of things to keep it going with those kids. Uh, so you'll have a little travel uh, oh, in yeah. the district. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, we go to Durant this year. Um, <laughs> we, 
go to McAllister this year. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, McAllister yeah. and Durant. I think Durant is going to be, and that's the last game, so that'll be the long one for us. Well, you'll so. be in Jeff Lee Stadium in McAllister. I coached there for two years as, oh, yeah. as the head football coach. And uh, uh, it's a football town. They, oh, I they know. They like football. It's, it's, they do it in Durant as well. But, uh, well, thank you for being here today on Inside Tulsa Athletics. And uh, when we come back, we'll have Brian Morrell, who is the head football coach at Memorial High School. Stuff. When you don't want it, what do you do with it? Go to TulsaRefuse.org. There, you'll learn what to do with stuff you don't know what to do with. Just give us a click. TulsaRefuse.org. It's what you do when you don't know what to do with stuff. Suffering from stuff? Stuff you don't know how to get rid of. Go to TulsaRefuse.org. Learn how to get rid of stuff easily and properly. TulsaRefuse.org. Just give us a click. It's that simple. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. Now we're uh, glad to have the head football coach of the Memorial Chargers, Brian Morrell. Brian, uh, glad to have you here. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Appreciate let's, it. Let's talk about the uh, the 18 season and how it feeds into the 19 off season and spring practice. Absolutely. So we had uh, 14 seniors graduate this year. Um, so we're losing 14 guys, but they set a really good example for uh, our younger guys to come up. Um, to hopefully, you know, we we you know went to a four, we had a four and eight season, which sorry four and six season, which was better than the previous year. So we uh, we're trying to build on that, and those seniors had a big hand in helping with that. And trying to get these young guys ready for this upcoming season. So, how do you go into off season? How uh, how did that go for you? Uh, going into off season is going pretty good. Uh, we got the kids on a new uh, weight training program, and uh, they're doing a really really good job. We've had a lot of uh, increases in our maxes. The kids are looking really good, getting stronger, bigger, faster every single day. So that's obviously going to help us uh, in the long run. So uh, it's looking pretty good right now. So during this period of time that you have for uh, spring practice. What are some of the things that you want to accomplish with your team? So what we'd like to do, obviously, we want to, we want to establish, you know, uh, some guys in some key positions for us. Hopefully get some guys that can play, you know, some spots that are, like I said, very important for our program. Uh, that's going to be pretty much it. A big, it's a big open competition for everybody. Uh, there's no starting positions right now at this time. Uh, the guys got to come out there and make it happen. And uh, hopefully we'll see some guys stand out and show up and, and we'll figure out who our starters are going to be. Are you going to have a spring game this year? Or? Uh, as of right now, probably not. No spring game this year. Just probably not going to have the time to do that. Just try to get some other stuff in before that, sir. Teaching is a little bit more important. Yes, than, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. That's always the key, I think, uh, terminology and technique and, and setting the culture that you want to have for your Absolutely. football team. I think that's important. So as you, uh, as you look into uh, this next year, the 19 season, 2019 season, uh, who's the team to beat in your in your district? Uh, you know, obviously the team to beat in our district is the is the defending district champs, Collinsville. Uh, I think they're going to be tough, just like they always are every year. Um, definitely, they're definitely going to have our have our you know battles with those guys and some of the other schools in our district. We've got a pretty tough district. Um, we're just hoping to to make a little noise this year and do well. You know, you have a very unique uh, scheduling situation this year. Yes, sir. Uh, we have a unique <laughs> opportunity as well. Uh, where we're going to have fall break that will be out of school all week long. Uh, we, we've never had that in the fall, and it's going to be interesting how our fall sports teams mm -hmm. all kind of mesh into that uh, week off and practice and mm -hmm. everything. But uh, you have a, a different game time with I'd, Claire Moore. Yes, sir, I do. Uh, so my staff and I, we were talking about it. You know, we, we knew we were going to have a week off for that, for that fall break. So we figured it would be really important to – you know, because it's kind of always tough to get the kids there and, and, you know, jobs and parents and all that stuff. So we were just really trying to get, you know, our three days of practice and we're going to play on Thursday. And uh, we, we wanted a noon kickoff on Thursday. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to play a noon kickoff on Thursday. 
looking forward to that. Uh, should be an exciting time for us and the program. And you know, we like to be trendsetters, so that's what we're doing. So, well, it certainly <laughs> is a trend, and I, you know, I think it's great that we can have a double header. Absolutely, uh, at La Fortune because Edison will play that night at home. That's correct. And uh, you kind of finish up and get an extra day to heal up and yes, so on. There, rest up for uh, your next extra opponent. So, I, we're excited about uh, having that game at twelve o'clock. I know when I. Uh, Sent it to the uh, Tulsa World, and Barry Lewis said, "Now, is this a is this a misprint?" I said, "No, <laughs> it says 12 noon on the schedule." So yeah. uh, uh, I'm excited about that. I think you'll get great coverage uh, because at noon, you know, we'll probably have to feed if the media is going to be there because yes, they'll sir. always come when they yes, sir. when they uh, know there's food. But uh, who are some of your returning starters you're looking forward to this year? <laughs> so really, um, like we're going to be a pretty young team. I've got one guy that's coming back. I've got. Five seniors, and uh, only one of them's actually got any playing experience at this time. Mm -hmm. That's our long snapper, and uh, he's been our long snapper for the last four years. He does a really great job for us. He's been to a few camps, you know, on his own already, um, doing very well at those camps, and uh, we're looking to see big things from him. What's his name? His name is Sammy Algia. Mm -hmm. So he's been a four-year starter for us, a long snapper. Other than that, it's we're going to have a bunch of new faces, new young guys, and we're going to try to get after it. Well, tell Sammy that uh, that uh, there is a market for long snappers. Uh, uh, Stacy Vinson, who is one of our ILDs, mm -hmm. uh, nephew, uh, has a scholarship at Notre Dame as the long snapper. That's yes, what he does. Yep. And uh, so uh, the kicking game is one-third of the, of the mm -hmm. game that you want to win. That's so. correct. Well, Brian, thank you for being here today with your enthusiasm. We will look forward to this next year. And uh, when we come back, we will have uh, Kevin Gordon from East Central High School. Stuff. When you don't want it, what do you do with it? Go to TulsaRefuse.org. There, you'll learn what to do with stuff you don't know what to do with. Just give us a click. TulsaRefuse.org. It's what you do when you don't know what to do with stuff. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Getting that college education, what are you going to do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills, the smarts. Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you going to make of yourself? What are you going to make of me? Are you suffering from stuff? Stuff you don't know how to get rid of. Go to TulsaRefuse.org. Learn how to get rid of stuff easily and properly. TulsaRefuse.org. Just give us a click. It's that simple. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. Our head football coach at East Central High School, Kevin Gordon. Kevin, welcome to Inside Tulsa. Thank you. Thank you. And I tell you, uh, this is an exciting time of the year. We get ready mm -hmm. for spring practice. Mm -hmm. uh, you made some headway last year in your, in your program. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that and then how it feeds into this year. Four and six. Uh, actually would have uh, liked to make the playoffs there. That last game uh, we lost to Sky Took. We win that ball game. We're in and they're out. So proud of the kids and the effort they gave. Uh, we made great strides, you know, uh, coming off of two one and nine seasons. But with both of those seasons, season one, we weren't very good. Season two, we, we got a little better, but we didn't know how to win. Season three, we learned how to win some, but we still had some steps that we need to take. So um, going into season four, very excited. Got a good group of kids up front. That's what I'm excited about. Got a, a strong group. We lost one off of that group. Uh, mm. Got a big 6'6", uh, 305 kid, oh, Terrion Fields. He's going into his senior year. He's gotten really strong, runs well, loves the weight room. Um, got him coming back at left tackle, Ezekiel Hearn, uh, Joey David at center. Let's see, Big Zeke is 6'2", 280. Joey's uh, the, the small one, 5'10", uh, 5'11", 255, if you want to call that <laughs> small. Uh, Kevin Green, he's six foot and uh, he's about 265. So we're, we're up front, we're, we're, that's going to be our strength. Uh, Darius Williamson uh, running downhill hard at him, six foot, 215 pound kid also plays linebacker, so he plays running back mm. with the linebackers mentality. Linebacker Mattel, yeah, now, that's good. Every now and then I would like him to maybe try to juke somebody, <laughs> but uh, he'll come to the sideline and say, no, I'm going to run over I'm going to run over him. I'm going to punish him. <laughs> um, Sir Little John is uh, going to uh, step in and try to play some quarterback for us. We've got an uh, incoming eighth grader at our middle school that uh, is a good-looking quarterback as well. Uh, Skill-wise, we're young, got a lot of babies. Defensively, strong at the linebacker core. Uh, Makai, 
Uh, coming back, Darius, we have uh, Dante Fagan playing middle linebacker. And he stepped in and played the last, as a freshman last year, played the last four games for us. And he's one of those kids, he's so athletic, you know, and he gets in there and then you're scratching your head and saying, huh, I should have been doing this the whole time with him. Mm -hmm. But uh, so we're excited and uh, looking forward to uh, what spring ball has to hold, going to team camp June 4th and 5th. We go out to Rejoice Christian, and uh, there will be 11 teams there uh, total, with uh, the 12 team being Bartlesville's bringing two teams. So, you know, have good competition McAllister, Casha, Bartlesville, Victory Christian, Bayan, Locust oh, yeah. Grove, Paul Huska, us, Kelly field. Bill, Haskell. So, will be some good competition across from mm -hmm. A all the way up. So, we're excited. How are your numbers? Numbers are looking good. Going into spring with about 40 and uh, hoping to have a really good class of uh, eighth graders come in, and uh, that's the key, getting those middle school kids in Absolutely. there. That is Absolutely. That's the key. Uh, so uh, how's your quarterback? Quarterback's good. He's, uh, I remember last year he had to step in, and uh, we lost Eric Crum in the Sepulpa game. So his name was Sir Little John, and he had to step in in that Memorial game, and, you know, those darts start coming at him really fast. And, uh, you know, he played wide receiver for us in corner, and, he was fine, but at quarterback, he's in halftime. He's holding that helmet, and he's trying to uh, – I told him, I said, you look like you were trying to go in that locker or trying to climb up <laughs> under it. But uh, I had to pull him aside and say, look, look him in the eye and get them eyes to go down a little bit and say, hey, it's going to be okay. You're Game right. experience is everything. Yes, it is. Game and, experience uh, is everything. So, uh, and, you know, you have uh, uh, 21 days to, mm -hmm. to get 10 practices in. When will you start? We start May 13th, go May 13th through the 24th. And actually, we're going to go a alternating um, schedule with hit one day, off one day. But the day that we're off, we'll come out with our helmets, shoulder pads, and shorts sure. on and do everything sure. on bags. And what I like about that format, it gives you a lot of teaching that you can do. And you can Absolutely. still um, use the sled and do all that stuff, you know, but it just limits the body, limits the collision on, on the kids. And, you know, when your numbers aren't, 80, 100 kids, that, that kind of helps. Yeah, you got to protect them. Yeah, yes. You got to protect them. Yes. Uh, we've got about 25 seconds here, but uh, what about uh, uh, dead period? Is that going to hurt you any, you think? No, actually, that's, that's a good thing there because it, it lets kids, all kids need a break. It lets mm -hmm. them take a moment away, breathe, go on vacation with their family, good. and have a good time. Excellent. Well, thank you for coming today. And uh, when we come back after these messages, We'll have Brad Caleb, the athletic director and head football coach at Booker T. Stuff. When you don't want it, what do you do with it? Go to TulsaRefuse.org. There, you'll learn what to do with stuff you don't know what to do with. Just give us a click. TulsaRefuse.org. It's what you do when you don't know what to do with stuff. My dad's always saying a little extra effort now will really pay off later. Here's how you can put in just a little extra effort and help out our schools in a big way. Just switch your checking account to TTCU. It's easy, and every time you use your school pride card, TTCU donates to our schools. So far, over a million dollars. They're the only ones doing that. So make the switch to TTCU and be the person who's making a difference for our schools. Are you suffering from stuff? Stuff you don't know how to get rid of. Go to TulsaRefuse.org. Learn how to get rid of stuff easily and properly. TulsaRefuse.org. Just give us a click. It's that simple. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. We have the Director of Athletics and the Head Football Coach at Booker T. Washington, Brad Caleb. And Brad, uh, it's been a good year for Booker T. Uh, it went a ways in the playoffs. Uh, let's talk about 18 and how that feeds into 2019. Uh, you know, 18 was supposed to have been a, a prosperous year for us. You know, we, we had like about five D1s on our team. And, of course, you know, uh, Coach went Alan Trimble at Jinx. His motto was, you know, if, if you stay healthy and have some luck, you have a chance to win a gold ball. And, unfortunately, uh, we got plagued with some injuries. And, uh, uh, but our kids played well. You know, we got to the semifinals and, and uh, uh, ran a, to a good football team, still water. And, uh, uh, came up short. I uh, was tell my my team after the game. I said, you know, we didn't get beat. We just ran out of time and uh, uh, had a good group of kids. And but uh, to get back to the semifinals, that's kind of unite uh, the upcoming season. And so we're looking forward to the the next season. So you feed from that, <clears throat> and you go into off season. How's how's the off season preparation been? It's been it's been going very well. 
Uh, today we started spring ball, and which we're excited about that. Uh, most of my skill guys, uh, they do track, and so I get all those guys back today. So uh, I'm excited about that, and and our staff are excited. So we'll see them for the first time today, and uh, uh, it, it's it's going to be a little bit different. You know, we graduated 23 seniors, mm. but you know we got some young guys uh, that are hungry and and eager and. Uh, uh, it's going to be a, 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 a different team. You're not going to see a Dax Hill out there, but you got some future Dax Hills out there that will showcase. And so we're excited about it. Uh, it's a team that I think uh, people that's going to overlook, and, uh, and 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 we're going to surprise a lot of people. Well, it's always important that you have those kids on your team that have had that success, have tasted what it takes to get to the gold ball round and everything so that'll be good who are some of the ones that you're really going to count on offensively and defensively this year? uh offensively you know we got you know jj hester who uh, is recruited by every one receiver and uh of course uh, he'll play some defense for us also and and probably um, my quarterback you know gentry williams who um, um, just saturday he won uh, 400 meters uh ran a 47 7 and got second in the 200 meters. Uh, he ran a 21-4-5. Mm. So he's going to be our quarterback. Uh, def defensively, we're going to have probably Krishan Brown going to be, uh, uh, he played our outside backer DN last year. We're going to move him to linebacker. And uh, Jonathan Brown's son, who's going to play nose guard. So uh, we're going to cater up those guys. But we got some young guys who can fill the board with uh, the DJ Jones and, and Dak. So uh, it's going to be a, a, a New look, Booker T, when you see us in the fall, but I assure you, you know, we, we're still going to have the speed and the talent, and, and we're just kind of looking forward to the season. Well, let's talk a little bit about your schedule. you got a couple of uh, new people on your schedule this year. Yeah, uh, you know, we go back to uh, uh, Bentonville, and us in Midwest City, Darrell Hall, one of my good friends, uh, kind of Oklahoma, Arkansas, uh, classic, and uh, we'll play North Little Rock again. It'll be on a Saturday, and... Um, We'll we'll play the late game this this year, and then uh, we get back. We play uh, Bishop Kelly, and then we'll play uh, uh, Bentonville at at home. Uh, that that third game. Uh, normally we went to Sweetport and played an Independence Bowl, which which was good uh, to showcase our kids in a major bowl. But man, you about to have a fire, you about to have a dream team when you go there. And uh, unfortunately, uh, we're not going through that again. But, you know, Benville, it, it'd be a good gate for us. And, and it'd be a good, a good showcase. It's not very far. So we're looking forward to those three non-district games. Other than the Hornets, who's the team to beat in your district? Uh, it's going to probably be Bixby. Of course, you know, Lauren Mag Montgomery does a great job over there. And uh, he does always reload. He has those Presley boys over there. And and uh, uh, they some uh, two brothers that is hard to to kind of raffle a little bit, but um, um, I, I'll say they're going to be the front runner in my district. I think Bixby will be the one. Mm -hmm. Well, we start to look forward to this next season. Uh, it's always uh, great to get the football season and so on. That uh, uh, young lady that follows you today has won back-to-back -back state champions in 5A girls soccer. Uh, and so we're excited uh, about that and uh, to go along with your boys championship in, in uh, 6A basketball. Mm -hmm. So when we come back, uh, we'll have Cassie Embry, the head coach of the state champion soccer team. Stuff. When you don't want it, what do you do with it? Go to TulsaRefuse.org. There, you'll learn what to do with stuff you don't know what to do with. Just give us a click. TulsaRefuse.org. It's what you do when you don't know what to do with stuff. Hi, I'm Tony Dillingham, athletic director for Jinx Public Schools. The first annual Oklahoma Athletic Directors Conference is the must-attend event for every Oklahoma high school athletic director. Join us June 10th and 11th at the Cox Convention Center in downtown Oklahoma City. The two-day conference will feature breakout sessions covering law, staff development, fundraising, social media, and many other areas that are sure to improve your effectiveness as a key administrator in your district. The OADC will also be a great place to network with key people in our industry regarding the latest issues and trends in Oklahoma athletics. Conference registration is now open, so visit OklahomaOIAAA.com for conference registration, hotel information, and details about the conference. Don't wait. 
Make your reservation today. Are you suffering from stuff? Stuff you don't know how to get rid of. Go to TulsaRefuse.org. Learn how to get rid of stuff easily and properly. TulsaRefuse.org. Just give us a click. It's that simple. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. We have a very special guest today, a two-time state champion, Cassie Embry. Cassie, uh, boy, those Lady Hornets really played. Yeah, they did well. Uh, let's talk about last year, uh, how that prepared you uh, to be in that mindset in the playoffs. It's a lot different in the playoffs than the regular season. Uh, let's talk about, a little bit about last year and then how that got you ready to go. Last year, is, I think it was a coincidence, but it kind of worked out. Last year we played the three Catholic schools in a row in the playoffs. We played uh, Bishop McGinnis, Bishop Kelly, and then Kasha. This year we played the same teams but in different order. Mm. So we played Kasha, then Bishop McGinnis, then Bishop Kelly. So I think it was kind of a coincidence, but also our girls were familiar with the situation and especially the teams. And the level of competition. Yeah. So it was very good. Uh, and, of course, winning on the road at McGinnis was a big win this year. It was. It was yeah. a tough game, and it, it was ugly, but we found a way to win, so that's what's important, I guess. Exactly. You know, I, I spent uh, three years at Guthrie uh, as the director of athletics, and McGinnis was in our conference. And uh, the Suburban Conference. And, boy, we had some knockdown dragouts with them both in every sport that we played. But it was always hard to win at Bishop McGinnis. That was tough. So I, when I saw that score, I thought, boy, we've got a chance. You know, we really do because winning there is big time. So who are some of your, your players, I think, that contributed this year to your success? Um, I want to just start by saying all of them did great. Even the girls on the bench played a major role. They kept the more, like the morale was high the whole game, even if they weren't going in. They were uplifting, so they were awesome. But um, my seniors is probably who I would have to say like were the big leaders to help us to get to where we were. We had a center back Ashton Gordon um, helped get us to where we were defensively. Not very many goals in the whole season. Um, Zoe and McKenna played holding center mid. Also helped with the with the no goals against. Then we had Lauren Cousins up top, who scored many goals. She was actually the leading goal scorer of the season this year. And then Carrington out wide, she had many goals, including two in the state championship game. And um, it was, and Mick was also in the defensive end to help. Mick Morris was uh, outside back. So all my seniors had a major role in the success that we had this year. The uh, when you look at the the game, as we talked a little bit before we started. Uh, you know, up there in the first half, and boy, we're just outplayed. I mean, they out hustled us. They, we, we had two shots on goal, I think. And uh, so, what made the difference as you went into the second half? Um, yeah, Booker T made us some adjustments at halftime about um, how we weren't doing 100% effort the first half. We were playing a little bit scared, which I understand when you're going into that big of a game, you got some nerves. Sure. And um, Bishop Kelly has some speed. And uh, we had to adjust for that. So at halftime I came in and I just told them, like, you guys aren't out of it yet. A 1-0 lead is not any – we've been 1-0 a few times this year and ended up having to go into penalty kicks at the end. So 1-0 lead doesn't mean you're out of it. I said, you played about 80%. If you'll go back in 100%, they're going to come in possibly having, like, a – flat foot feeling like, oh, we're winning 1-0. So if you can go in 100% and get one in early, it's going to change the momentum. And we scored in 33 seconds. Yeah. And that's exactly what it did, change the momentum. We came back, scored five goals in the second half. Which is unbelievable because that's a, as, as many you scored in the whole the playoffs, wasn't it? Yeah, um, and Bishop Kelly had only been scored on one time. So the fact that we were able to get five in says a lot, I think, about us on our attacking end. Well, I don't think there was any question in the second half. It was out hustled, out worked them to the ball. There was no question. The shots on goal. I mean, there were some that I mean, it could have been seven or eight. Uh, actually, you know, they were just just off by a little bit. So, uh, what an exciting time for uh, the girls' soccer program, and of course Booker T. Obviously, uh, what does it look like next year? What do you got coming back? We are losing six starters. Um, and that would make me nervous. However, I said the same thing last year. I said, oh, my goodness, we're losing so many starter, starting players. And uh, we were able to pull it together and come back and win another one. So we are losing a lot, but I still have confidence in the team and their ability to come back strong. Well, one of the things I think uh, when we talked earlier with, uh, with your athletic director, uh, being in that winning culture, 
makes a difference when you get to this point of the season uh, in the playoffs because they've been there. Mm -hmm. They understand what it takes to get to that next level. And so even the younger players like that you mentioned on the bench, they're a part of it. They see the culture that is there and what you have to do. Yeah. And uh, every year before, I've only been there two years, but both years, the girls who graduate write good luck letters to the girls going on. And that's what one of them mentioned. They said, you have one thing over Bishop Kelly, and that's the feeling of winning this, this state championship game. You guys got to feel it last year, and you know what it is, and you know that pressure, and they didn't have it last year, which not taking away from Bishop Kelly. They have no. 14 state championships, so they right. clearly – um, are successful too, but I thought that was a good point. Like, yeah, we we know what it feels like. We want to feel that again. It's always that way. I think uh, uh, when you put yourself in that position, uh, the uh, apprehensiveness of the game and all that goes away pretty quickly because you've been there before. Uh, so uh, do you have a lot of uh, uh, the makeup of your team next year, a lot of young players, or are you going to have some seniors that will come through next year? Yeah, I'll have some seniors, and one of them is also already committed to go D1, so she'll, she'll be coming back, Grace Pettit. Um, one of my outside backs is c coming back, my goalkeeper. She had actually never played goalie before. And we brought her in from the basketball team who won state last year. Mm -hmm. And she's a sophomore, and she had gotten zero goals against in district, which is oh insane. Never played goalie before. So we'll get her back, which is exciting. What's her name? Uh, Victoria Nunez. Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. good. So never played before. Never played goalie. She's played soccer, but on the field, never played goalie. Sure. Um, so we needed someone, and I said, let's find someone with good hand-eye coordination. So we went to the basketball team. And she had won state there, and I said, you know, you've played goalie before. You haven't or you played soccer before you haven't played goalie, would you want to try it? She said, yeah. <laughs> so she's a tri-sport athlete. She also made it to regionals in tennis. Oh, my goodness. So she's very athletic, and she's unbelievable, like, attitude and cool spirit, uh, team spirit. She's great. Well, that's fantastic. Well, congratulations. We have the championship trophy. It's really great to have those uh, always coming into Tulsa and, and Booker T. Uh, and uh, thank you for being here today and sharing this with us. It's, uh, it's been a great year. Uh, a great two years for girls soccer. When we come back, we'll be closing our show for the year. Stuff. When you don't want it, what do you do with it? Go to TulsaRefuse.org. There, you'll learn what to do with stuff you don't know what to do with. Just give us a click. TulsaRefuse.org. It's what you do when you don't know what to do with stuff. Well, as they say in this business, that's a wrap. This is our last show for this year. Uh, all the coaches, student athletes, our guests, we really appreciate them being here and sharing with us uh, all of their experiences in high school athletics. We want to say thank you to our sponsors, TTCU and, and Tulsa Recycle. Uh, without them, we couldn't do the things that we do for our student athletes, and we really, really appreciate that. Also want to have a shout out for the Memorial Boys Basketball Program, a state champion, three-peat, back to back to back. And for Booker T. Washington's boys basketball team, to win the 6A state championship after being the runner-up the year before to Memorial in the 5A state championship. And then finally, we combinate our year with a 5A state girls championship in soccer. Cassie Embry was our last guest today, and uh, she talked about all of the good things that happened with her student-athletes and all of her uh, accomplishments over this past two years. Uh, it's really been an outstanding year for Tulsa Athletics. A number of young people have been able to go to the next level uh, and get their college education uh, paid for by their athletic prowess. As we look forward to next year, I think it's going to be really exciting as we get into the 1920 season. And we certainly hope that all of you will join us next year on Inside Tulsa Athletics. Have a great summer. <laughs>